In this video, we'll bring our game res into Character Creator, transfer clothing weights from our Character Creator topology, parent accessories to the appropriate bones and pivots, add our painter textures to our materials, hide body parts for clothing items, set up capsules and weight maps for our cloth simulation, and finally, we're going to save our assets to a custom library for later use. So we've gone through the process of exporting our high-res, exporting our low-res, baking, texturing our stuff in Painter. Now we're going to bring all of that in the CC. There's one thing we need to do, though, and that is in our original file here, remember we have shirt low, uh, and this is split up into one, two, three, four, so that there's no overlapping spaces, or there's no overlapping pieces, so we're not getting normal map bake errors. I want to go ahead and combine all of these objects into one mesh. So, uh, and again, Max Miyamoto, Blender, Cinema 4D, Houdini, doesn't matter. I'm going to take all of these objects here. I'm going to shift right click in Maya and say combine. And then I'm going to say delete by type history, uh, modify freeze transformations, and then modify reset transformations. I think that's correct. Yeah, freeze and reset. Speaking of normals, I also do a mesh display unlock, mesh display set the face, mesh display soften edge that's just how i'm doing all of these meshes so for what it's worth do all of those steps uh, i'm also going to rename some of this stuff i'm going to open up the hyper shade by clicking this button here uh, right now my material sets are set to like for example shirt is this but if i want to name this shirt it's going to have a naming discrepancy so i'm going to control double click shirt and call this shirt underscore mat and i'm going to append mat to all of these uh, materials here So now when I go in here and rename the shirt 01 low to just shirt, I'm able to name it shirt because shirt underscore mat is the material name. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these objects. There is one thing I do want to bring up though, because it happens every once in a while. I'm going to go in here to UV, UV set editor, and you're going to see as I click through all of these objects, I have map one as my UV set editor. If for some reason like boots 01, and let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold down my space bar, go in here to windows, modeling editors, UV editor. If for some reason boots one had a UV set editor name of map one and then boots two, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, let's go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna rename this to, sometimes this will pop up. It's uh, diffuse. And that's where my UVs are. And then I was to go through here and merge these together. This one has diffuse and this one has map one. It's going to basically delete your diffuse UVs, which is going to be a big surprise and not very helpful. So what you want to do is go through and make sure you just have one UV set for all of your objects here. And if you have multiple, just go in here, for example, to diffuse and you can right click, go in here to UVs. Say UV sets, copy UVs to UV set map one, go back to your UV set on this object here. Say diffuse, we can delete that one and then map one has the UVs and we're good to go. You can create a map one. If it doesn't have one, just say new, name it map one. Whatever you need to do to make sure that every object in your scene has the same UV set editor name and has your UVs in it. So when I go through here and grab all of these, for example, boots objects, and then again, shift, right click, go down here to combine, delete by type history, freeze transformations, reset transformations. If you want to play it safe, uh, unlock, set the face, soften, all my normals here. Now I have all of these. They are all one object. They have all my UVs. And then I can rename this one to just boots. And I'm going to do this for all of my remaining objects. There we go. All of my objects are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and save a working scene file. So save scene as we have demo gear working. I'm going to say demo gear game working for this file. And I'm good to go with this file. So I'm going to select all of the objects here. We're going to go to file export selection. And we're going to put this again right on our desktop here. I'm going to go into gear bake. We have high, low. I'm going to do gear bake, even though we're not really baking game. Name it whatever you'd like, whatever makes sense for you. And then we're going to go open up character creator from the Real Illusion Hub. And then in character creator, we're going to open our body file. So right on my desktop, I have our textured project that we ended with. And now we're ready to bring our clothes in. So to do that, I'm going to go in here to create accessory, 
And that's in, instead of, you know, file import, again, it's create accessory. Uh, we're going to go into our gear bake. And again, we have our gear bake game file that has all of our game res meshes with our UVs all combined together and named. Go ahead and double click that. Uh, it's going to ask if you want to merge everything, hit cancel. We want to keep everything separate. And that's going to bring in all of our objects temporarily or at least initially as accessories. So you can see this little icon right here, the little glasses icon. Uh, those are accessory icons. Now, some of them will stay accessories, but some of them are going to turn into cloth, which we'll go ahead and do first. Now, here's a problem. Right now, when we bring it in this way, it's not exactly where our game res is. So in this type of workflow, that's why I like to have a separate game res uh, for again baking so our low underscore low file that we have our working file with our UVs and our meshes separated out and then we have our high res ZBrush file and between those two files I maintain parity for everything going through character creator I just don't have parity so if I want to make a change with my high res file I'm going to bake it to my low res bake file and then this game res file is basically what shows up in character creator Again, not ideal, and we're going to have another video where if you do want to maintain parity between your ZBrush file and your character creator file, you can use kind of the, what I would call the 3D print workflow, uh, which again, we'll get to in a later video. So for now, uh, we have our objects in here. You can see, again, they're not exactly where they need to be, so I'm going to have to move them manually. And again, by doing that, I lose parity, but that's okay. So we're going to hit uh, W or select all these objects or all these accessories right now. Hit W on your keyboard to go into move mode. And I'm going to move these forward a little bit and then also go in here. And I think we need to raise them up uh, just a tad as well. And again, we're just kind of eyeballing them into place so that they're generally where they should be. Again, probably one of my least favorite things to do in this workflow but I think we're close enough. All right, so everything's in place. And the next thing we're gonna do is assign our cloth objects. So what's the difference between cloth and accessories? Uh, cloth is something that's gonna go across multiple bones in your body. So for example, a t-shirt is going to, if I put on a t-shirt and I move my arms and I move my head, you know, the neck, it's gonna move with your neck bones, it's gonna move with your shoulder bones, it's gonna move with your spine bones. That's a cloth object. Uh, however, something like a helmet that's rigid it's only going to be you know i can i can assign it to say my head bone and it'll rotate moves move and rotate with my head bone it's not going to be like bendy or wiggly or go across multiple bones aren't going to influence it so that'll stay an accessory so speaking of shirt we'll just start there i'm going to go ahead and select my shirt here again right now it's an accessory how i convert a shirt accessory to a shirt cloth object is pretty simple for instance, we're going to select the shirt, which if you want to see the shirt, you can turn the shirt off and turn it back on just to remind ourselves this section across his chest and down his arm is basically his shirt. Kind of a interesting harness shirt, but uh, we'll call it a shirt. So with shirt selected, we're going to go over here and we're going to say transfer skin weights. There is no shirt template. In this case, we're just going to use the default, which you can kind of see a shirt and a pants icon right here. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And that's going to go ahead and transfer the body weights. Um, the weights that the CC base topology body has is weighted to the current bones or the skeleton inside the body. And it's going to transfer those weights to these objects here. This is just going to stay here. So you can have it keep it open or you can just hit this close button here. And now the shirt is weighted to the body. If you want to see it, you can go in here to motion, uh, mail, walk, I suppose. And we haven't finished everything yet, so it's going to look really weird. But uh, we can go ahead and have it walk. And you can see everything else is kind of just floating in place. Uh, but his shirt is weighted to his body. You can see it's on his chest. And as he moves his arm, the shirt's coming right along with it. So let's go ahead and say motion pose, a pose. And let's go ahead and fix all the rest of these objects. Or by fix, I just mean appropriately assign them. So uh, just I'm going to work my way down the list here. Uh, boot armor, I'm going to leave as an accessory because again, it's not going to bend across the knee or the ankle. It's just going to be as the calf moves, so is his armor. That can stay an accessory. Arm armor is interesting. You could say, okay, he's just as his forearm moves, it's going to move. But I also want this last one to kind of go with his hand as his wrist bends. So in this instance, this arm armor, I'm going to go ahead and say transfer skin weights. It's going across multiple bones. Uh, default is fine. We'll go ahead and hit apply. And we'll turn this into a cloth object. We will edit these skin weights because although it is a cloth object and it is being influenced by multiple joints, we don't want the armor to bend. 
necessarily. So you know what? Now that we're thinking about it, let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to hit close. And with the arm armor uh, skin weights applied, again, as his arm moves, it will kind of bend with his wrist. And uh, you can see he's got a nasty bite mark there. Uh, but I want to go ahead and fix these skin weights. So again, with arm armor, and it went ahead and rearranged this. So I'm going to choose the very top node here. We're going to go into skin weights. And this is fairly easy. Basically, what we want to do is if I right click this hand bone right here in the viewport, you're going to see I have weights across here. I want to go ahead and change my selection from paint or, you know, how I select things from paint to selection. And then I'm going to go through here and I'm going to select a piece of all of these lower hand objects Then I'm going to hit grow a bunch of times to select all of the verts in that last piece of armor there. And then with our hand bone selected, I'm going to say flood the weights with a value of one. That way, as this wrist bends and the hand moves, all of these points will rotate along with it in a very rigid bound manner. It's not going to kind of bend as it moves. And the rest of these two, I can go ahead and just fix these. These, these should be fine. They'll kind of twist with the arm. I Honestly, I'm probably going to leave them. Yes, they will technically bend a little bit, but as the arm twists, I don't think they're going to make that much of a visual difference. If you want to, you could go through here and select all of these verts and then again go in here and say grow and then go through here and like right right click like forearm twist you get a you know or assign this the forearm bone if you want to again i'm going to leave them alone but i just want to shout that out as something that you know could uh, come up so anyway again i'm going to leave this alone we've already filled those skin weights with the appropriate hand skin weights so i'm going to go click skin weights again to go out of skin weights mode and let's go in here to motion male walk and we'll just do another test here so now the shirt and the armor should be working fine again these kind of bend with his arm but it doesn't really bother me too much and then that last armor joint uh, goes along with his wrist movement so i think that's okay for for my needs so we're going to go in here to motion pose a pose and again i'm going to i'm going to stop doing animation tests now but feel free to test as much as you'd like and we'll just keep working our way down here so pants we're going to go in here to again transfer skin weights uh, again it's not a dress or anything so we're just going to stick with default hit apply and again i'll just go ahead and leave this open because we're going to be in here for a while uh the glove left here, we'll go ahead and select this. Uh, this we can't actually use the gloves template. Hit apply. And again, as I'm doing this, it's changing my uh, icon from accessory to, you know, it's got a little glove icon now. Backpack is going to be rigid bound. Boots go across, you know, the ankle, the ankles and the legs and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and say use the shoes template and apply. Loincloth, we're going to go ahead and use the dress template water pouch is going to be an accessory and again the reason i have this as its own separate piece is just in case i want to make another character that uses a water pouch because again we're going to be able to save all of these objects to a library in a second um i can make a character with a bunch of water pouches on them and i don't have to worry about where they're placed or anything like that they can just be an accessory that can just go on anything if they have water pouches on a backpack or whatever um i'm free to do that uh, helmet cloth we'll go ahead and say uh, default Shoulder pad is going to be rigid bound to probably upper arm. Axe is going to be rigid bound as an accessory, obviously. And then helmet is going to be rigid, rigid bound uh, to just the head joint. So I think we've done all of our cloth and now we'll talk about accessories. So we'll go ahead and close out of our transfer weights map. So as we've already discussed, these cloth objects are influenced by multiple bones. These accessory objects are influenced by a single bone. So we'll start here with the helmet. We have the helmet selected and I've hit W on my keyboard. That goes into move mode and you'll see the helmets up here, right? The mesh for the helmet. If I turn this helmet on and off, you'll see that's that, those are all the helmet pieces. The pivot for the helmet is way down here. And if I scroll down, so I have the helmet selected, I'm over here in the modify panel with the attribute tab selected and if i scroll down you're going to see right now the bones attached to is the base hip so when he was walking around and the clothes are just kind of hovering in space that's the reason why so there's two changes we need to make 
Now in my notes, it says update the attached bones and then I'll then set the pivots. I don't know that the order really matters, but I'll walk you through both. So the first thing we're gonna do is the attach to, we're gonna change this. Right now it's set to B or CC base hip. I'm gonna say pick parent. I'm gonna click in the general area of the head joint. And if it didn't update correctly, you know, we can try it again, you know, just again, aim for the head. If it still just refuses to pick the head joint, go in here to the three dots icon, uh, scroll down until we get to the spine one, spine O2. two. Here's the base head. Go ahead and select that. You're gonna see the alignment. It can inherit a move, scale, and rotate, which we do want checked on. We're not gonna align it to anything in particular. So we're gonna go ahead and leave those, uh, leave this at none and then hit okay. So now the attached to is changed to CC base head. Uh, the pivot, if I hit W, is still down here at the world origin. So I'm gonna go through here. I can do, uh, here's a quick set. You can go through here and you can choose uh, front, middle, and back. Uh, for the pivot, you can also go down here and choose, uh, let's just go in here and hit the middle button here, or maybe the middle bottom, and that gets it gets us within the vicinity. If we want to fine tune this pivot, we can go in here to edit pivot. Now we're in edit pivot mode. You can see that button stayed highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and move this into place. You know, we'll put it somewhere generally here. We'll say go out of edit pivot, edit pivot mode. So now, uh, I guess let's do this real quick. We'll go in here to motion, mail, walk M. The, the other accessories we haven't done yet, so those are going to look a little weird, uh, but the clothing should look fine and the helmet should look fine. So while he's walking, uh, you see all of our accessories that haven't been given the right parent or the right pivot yet are still kind of wobbling around and floating. However, the helmet is sticking to his head here, and uh, as his head moves, his helmet is moving as well. One problem we do have is his earrings are floating, so let's go ahead and say motion, pose, a pose, and we'll go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to zoom in. We still have the helmet's accessory selected. And again, we're not changing what this is. We're not making it into a clothing object or hair or anything like that. Although that is something I should mention. We don't, we didn't create any hair, brows, or beard, but if you needed something like if you made a mustache or you made some eyebrows and it needs to move with the face, instead of selecting it and saying transfer skin weights, simply select it, choose create hair, brows, or beard. You'll choose from a template and it'll transfer the weights for you and you'll be good to go. So that's the only difference between clothing and those hair, brows, or beard. So back to the helmet, we're gonna go ahead and select that. We're gonna go into the edit mesh button to go into, again, we're going into a mode now. So we're gonna go into edit mesh mode. We already are on vertex selection mode. So we'll zoom in here. I'm gonna grab a, a good chunk of those earrings and then I'm gonna go down here to grow. Let's go ahead and grow those out. If you did want to, you know, do a soft selection, like choose a, no, let's just do it. We'll choose a point in here. There's also a soft selection option. So you can change the radius and the bias in here. So if you ever do want to go in here and edit your geometry, you can select verts. You can have a soft selection and move whatever uh, you want around. In our case, we're going to go and turn off soft selection. And again, grab a big chunk of those earrings, go in here to grow so that they're all selected. And then we're simply going to move those into since we moved the ears from the original elf, you know, the earrings obviously aren't gonna match up. Once we're done with this, we're still in edit mesh mode. So we need to click that button to hop out. And now we're in regular mode here, back to where we started. So we'll just keep moving down the list here. We're gonna go to our ax. Uh, again, if you wanna set the pivot first, we can. I don't think it makes any difference. So we're gonna go, uh, we'll choose the middle option here and that'll put the uh, pivot pretty close to where I want it. I'm going to go into edit pivot mode and again hit W on your uh, keyboard so you can go into move mode. Move up here as you can see world move and you can also just in case you need it you can switch between world move and local move. Same thing with rotate. There's parent and local rotate so W and then E is rotate. You just double tap E or double tap W to change which move mode you're in. In this case it doesn't make too much of a difference. So I'm gonna say this is generally where I want that ax to be grabbed by anybody's hand. So we'll go out of edit pivot mode. And now we're going to go ahead and attach and move this into place. So first we'll go in here. I guess, you know what, we'll go ahead and move it into place first. So we'll go ahead and say, hey, you get moved this way and rotated this way. So whenever I store this in a library, it'll be already oriented and pivoted to where it's supposed to be. And this is you know, basically if anybody is going to use this ax, it'll generally show up in the right hand and also be bound uh, to the right bone, which is what we're going to do next. So again, go in here to pick parent, 
choose that and then just kind of select in here. This one, it chose the right one, base hand uh, or base R hand, which is his right hand. If you need to, you can go into the three dots and choose whatever bone you want. So this is updated. We'll just keep again, shoulder pad, choose this one. We'll go ahead and just center that pivot, uh, pick parent. Let's see here, we'll try that again. Base spine is close. I'm gonna scroll down until we get to the uh, our upper arm. So that'll be for the shoulder pad and our pivot is set. And then water pouch, same deal. We'll just say set that pivot to the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and leave base hip as its bone attachment. Backpack, and in this case, we'll just go and choose spine two, say okay. And again, we'll just center that pivot. Last but not least is the boot armor. We'll choose pick parent. This uh, set at the calf twist. Let's go into that three dot menu and we'll set this to base R calf. Say okay. And we'll go ahead and center that pivot. So I think we're all done. Let's go ahead and set up our materials. And this will be for our cloth and our accessories. So I'm just gonna go one by one. We'll start with the pants. I'm going to go into the material. So under the modify section, the material tab, we have pants here. And I'm not gonna go through every single one of these. It's the same process for each. By default, it looks like the shader type set to traditional. In this case, I'm gonna do this drop down menu, choose PBR. That's gonna switch out my options. I'm gonna double click base color. And we're gonna go to where our desktop is, gear textures. This is where our gear is. Just in case it tosses me out of this directory, I'm gonna go up here and select this and say Control C to copy this directory. And then I'm just gonna start plugging this in. So base color for our, where do we start? The pants. I'm gonna scroll down until we see pants. Here's all the pants textures. There's a base color there, double click that. And by default, they look a little faded. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see strength is at 80 by default. Go ahead and crank that up to 100. Uh, and there we got the full diffuse strength. Go in here to bump map, double click that, and we'll plug in the, again, scroll down to the pants normal. That's our bump. And it'll to ask if you want to do bump or normal. We're going to choose normal, say OK. And let's go ahead and zoom in here. So when I'm looking at the bump map, if it looks a little inverted, you can go down here to flip normal. So again, with base color selected, I'm getting base color options. You see there's a strength slider. If I choose bump, you're gonna see now I'm getting a flip normal Y option. So if I hit flip normal Y and that looks correct, then go ahead and flip normal Y is the option we want. That's basically the difference between direct X and OpenGL. So when you go and you export your normal map, you can choose if you wanna export OpenGL or direct X. Either one you do, you can bring it in here and choose flip normal Y to toggle between either option. Doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, AO, same deal, scroll down, pants, plug in your pants AO map, metallic, roughness, and there you go. Now our pants are completely set up. They have all the materials set up. And then you just work your way down the list. Again, glove, change it to PBR, plug in your maps, change bump, flip Y, base color, strength up to 100, and that's the entire process. So go ahead and do that for all of your objects. So we've got our materials applied, and let's talk about calculating collision, because this is a really cool option. So you can see our pants are kind of poking through, and so are our boots, and we can actually use Character Creator to fix this. So if I go down here to my pants, and we go back to our, again, a modify panel, and our attribute tab, we're gonna go all the way down until you see there's two options. We can either hide the body underneath and or if we scroll up to the very top, we can conform this mesh uh, so that we can reduce the amount of collision happening with our game res mesh. So we'll start with conform. Let's go ahead and choose that. So again, choose pants, hit the conform button. Now we're in conform mode. All I have to do is hit calculate collision. It will go through and make sure that those pants are no longer colliding with the body. So number one, that's awesome. Number two, if we keep scrolling down, we can go to our cloth layer settings and you'll see all of our cloth objects are in this list. You can go through and you can change the order of which way these things go. So basically, if you have a naked character body and then they're wearing socks and then they have pants over those socks and then over those pants, they have a belt and over the belt, they have a shirt and over that shirt, they have a jacket, let's say you can make it so that each one of those is on a different layer that is on top of each other. So when you say 
you know, you get them all in order and then you say run collision, it will actually ensure that all of those pieces are looking at those underlying layers and not colliding with those underlying pieces. In our case, he's a little simpler than that. His pants actually don't really interfere with his boots because they're just kind of tucked in. His shirt, you know, isn't tucked into his belt. His pants have a built-in belt. So I don't have to worry so much about layers, but I do want to bring this up because it's really cool. If you do have a very layered character, you can go in here and again, you can click on this little gear icon. You can change the collision order, you know, one through 10, and you can also click and drag these around in order to reorder them. And then once you're done, just hit run collision and you're good to go. In our case, all we have to do is, for example, select the boots and then just run conform and then just run calculate collision. That's really all we need to do. Uh, but again, that layer, the cloth layer settings option with those selected uh, is also totally awesome. So anyway, uh, we've done that. Let's quickly talk about the pants option. So we'll click the conform button to go out of conform mode. We'll click pants. And again, if every time, if you're using CC character topology and uh, you have a pair of pants, and we're going to put this in our library and every character you assign these pants to, it will auto hide a section of the CC topology mesh. You can do that, and that's underneath the pants option. Again, select the pants, uh, scroll all the way down until you get to the hide body mesh tool. And with the hide body mesh tool selected, it goes into a mesh selection mode. Uh, we're in the basic mode now. So we can see our pants kind of in a ghosted mode and then our CC base topology underneath it and as triangles. All I need to do is, okay, with these, when we're wearing these pants, I don't want to see the leg. So I can, I can choose the leg and turn it off or if I control click it, it'll bring it back. In this case, I can't use basic mode just because the pants aren't really taking up, you know, legs or anything, but I can go in here to advanced and now I have a little bit uh, more nuance to my selection. So I can say, again, I will hide the, the pelvis area and maybe one ring above, and then we'll hide the legs down to about, uh, that's a little bit too far. So I'll undo that last one. And then I'll just go down the other leg here and if you want to fine tune your selection for these, you can go through here. You can select, you know, these uh, faces, for example, and you can go over here and hit hide. Uh, same thing for this side, just select these faces, hit hide. Uh, there is a mirror option here. You can actually just uh, click apply mirror. But anyway, we just did an automatic, we just selected those and hid them. So now every time I put on the pants for any CC character object, including this one, it will hide all of these faces. So once we're done, we'll go out of hide body mesh mode by clicking that button. And now with those pants on, it will get rid of that mesh underneath it. So feel free. And again, it's super easy for the boots, especially if you go down here to boots, scroll down and do hide body mesh. Again, we can't use basic because, you know, I don't want to hide too much of leg, but here under advanced, we can just choose. Let's hide all of the feet for both sides. And then one rung up, not quite two rungs. So we'll just do one rung up. And again, you could go in and fine tune this so again we'll just select across both and say hide and now those pieces of the body will be hidden every time those boots are applied to a cc character topology so again we'll go out of hide body mesh tool so now if we go back into motion and we choose male walk everything should look pretty okay if not this is a good opportunity to go through and test and make sure that all of your attachment points are correct all of your clothing is bending along with the body and I think we're in good shape. Uh, one thing we want to do though, is we want to start adding cloth simulation to our cloth objects. So let's go back into motion, pose, a pose. And for this loincloth, for example, uh, we're going to need a couple of things. Number one, we need to turn on physics for our character creator project. Uh, and number two, we also need to save this. So let's go in here to file, uh, save project as, we probably should have saved a long time ago. I'm going to call this uh, Goblin Demo 04 with gear. And let's talk about how to add cloth to our scene. Uh, again, first thing I said is up here, you need to turn on rigid body simulation and soft cloth simulation. And you may be thinking, well, I understand turning on soft cloth because that's what this cloth is going to end up being. Why would we turn on rigid body? Well, right now we're going to have a soft cloth object, but we're not going to have it collide with our actual geometry. Because again, when we went into polyframe mode, you saw how dense these meshes were. It's very expensive to have cloth colliding against, you know, expensive geometry, basically. So instead of colliding against geometry, it's going to collide against capsules. So we'll go ahead and set that up. I guess we can do that first. So let's go over here and we're going to set up capsules for his base body. So his naked body, 
uh, is what's going to be kind of driving the capsules, his bone system. So we're going to go down here and choose the CC base character. And it's been a while since we've been in there. So when I open this up, this is where, again, the tear ducts and the eye occlusion, the teeth and the body and the tongue are all at. So again, choose the CC base plus character top group node. And then we're going to go uh, scroll down until you see this collision shape button underneath the modify attributes panel. So hit the collision shape button. That'll go into collision shape mode. And in this case, we have a, uh, a bunch of options here. They, there's capsules all over this body. We have capsules in the chest and the pelvis and the legs, etc. We don't need all of those. So for example, the lower legs aren't going to be colliding you know, with anything above the knee. So I, with that selected, I can go in here and say, there's two things. I could either go in here and hit this little delete button and that'll delete the capsule and deactivate the selected part. Or if I want to keep the capsules around, but I just don't need them, I can just choose deactivate just by checking that box off. The thighs will collide with the claw. So I'll go ahead and select that one. You'll see there's already a capsule in here by default. You can add a capsule if you want to, that'll duplicate that capsule off. And then you can hit uh, W or E or uh, what is it? W to move, E to rotate, R to scale. When you scale out, that'll go ahead and change the overall thickness of it. And then you can scale down to scale non-uniformly. And then of course, W is pretty self-explanatory. You can just move your capsule around and then rotate. Same deal, just go through here and rotate. Uh, if you don't need this one, you can just delete it out of there. And again, you can just start with these capsules and you can uh, move them around. You can change the capsule type. There's a box and a sphere in here, but we'll go ahead and just stick with capsule. Yeah, and this is something we also talked about already in the character creator ZBrush posing section where we're moving Avatar Aang around with his cloth. So you may already be, if you've already watched those videos, you may already know what this is all about. Uh, we'll go back over here to the other leg here. We'll go ahead and fatten this up and we'll go ahead and move scale and rotate this into position here. And as the leg moves around, and I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect. I mean, it'll probably be close enough. You know, I don't want it to push the cloth out too far. And plus, the loincloth goes pretty in between his legs and it gets pretty thin down here. So I don't, I'm not anticipating a ton of cloth collision needing to happen. You know, but if you've got like a dress or, a, you know, a very wide cloth in here, it's probably more important for you uh, to do this. For me, for this particular character, there's probably going to be some leg interpenetration you know, but it's, it's fine. It's fine for my needs. Uh, let's keep working our way up the body here. The pelvis, I'm going to go ahead. Here's the other thing too. We haven't gotten into weight maps yet, but I essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a weight map where the areas in the weight map where it's black will be weighted to the body. And then the areas that are white will be cloth. So for example, let's go out of collision shape editor here. And if we go in here to motion, uh, po or sorry, male walk male. We haven't assigned cloth to this yet. It's just a piece of cloth. The loincloth is just bound to his body. So as he walks around, you'll see it's kind of bound to his knees and it, you know, it doesn't behave like cloth. So we're going to fix that. So we've already set the capsules up so we can finish this thought. Let's go back in here to collision shape. And again, the pelvis, I don't think we're going to need because again, this is all going to be weighted to his body here. So this we can go ahead and act deactivate. The arms aren't ever going to be colliding with any cloth on this scene. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of any of the arms. The, we, we do have a neck cloth back here. It's going to be set up the exact same way as a loin cloth. It's kind of up to you if you want to have these activated or not. I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate these. I'm not overly interested in that neck cloth, to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead and go out of that mode. And in fact, this is another thing you can do too. If you brought something in you don't want anymore, you can either go in here and just turn it off so you can turn off the helmet cloth or if you want it out of your scene completely, you can just delete it out of your scene and it is gone. So now uh, we just have our loin cloth here. Let's go ahead and select that and let's turn this into cloth. So we've already set physics to be allowed in our scene by turning on rigid body simulation as well as soft cloth simulation. We have our loin cloth selected. Let's go over here and there is a physics tab underneath the modify panel. And we need to activate physics for that object. And we also need to include a weight map. Uh, before I do that, let's go ahead and open up ZBrush. And you don't have to use ZBrush for this. It's just a nice visual way to do it. You can go into Photoshop with your UVs and just paint it if you want. What I'm gonna do is go in here to import. 
on our desktop here, we had our gear bake, and then here is our gear bake game file. I'll go ahead and bring that in. And this doesn't have any options on. I'm not importing any cameras or any mats as polygroups or anything. Just turn all those options off. File imported, drag it onto my canvas, go into edit mode. I'm going to alt tap the loincloth and then open up subtool. So that's selected, go into solo mode. And easy way to kind of paint a weight map. Uh, I'm going to turn on colorize, and when I do that, that's going to show you that all of these verts are already painted white. So if I hold down control, switch this over to mass lasso, I'm going to make sure all of these right here are weighted to the body. And I can control tap this to blur my mask out if I want, uh, and then I can control tap to invert that mask. So we'll go ahead and blur that mask, and then with these verts unmasked, I'm going to switch to a black color, go in here to color, fill object. Control drag to get rid of my mask. And now these verts will be weighted to the, you know, when we transfer the mesh, that's all gonna be weighted to the hips. And then this will behave like cloth, this section here. So to get this map out of ZBrush, we're gonna go in here to texture map. And we're gonna say create new from poly paint. And that's gonna transfer our poly paint information, uh, which is just black and white pixels to a texture map that is uh, corresponds to our UVs. Now I do see an issue here. If you look at this, you'll see that this loincloth front, if I hover over this, it's pointing up. If I go in here to character creator and I have loincloth selected, I go into the material here and we look at this color map, you're gonna see that loincloth is pointing down. That's a ZBrush feature. So what we're gonna do is with the texture map that we just made, clone it so we have access to it. Uh, if I go in here to the texture menu, you're gonna see again, it's upside down. Hit that flip V button and then go in here to export. Here's my export image options. You can see we can export this as a JPEG, Photoshop file, PNG. I'm gonna choose PNG, and let's go ahead and put this on our desktop gear textures, and it's a loincloth. So let's scroll down until we see our loincloth texture. So we'll keep this semi-organized. I'm gonna click this one, and then swap out roughness, in this case, with weight map. It's a PNG file. So now if we go back into Character Creator, again, we have our uh, go to our Physics tab. Here's our weight map. We've activated it. So go ahead and turn that on with the loincloth selected. Here's our edit weight map. Double click that and then search for our loincloth weight map we just made. Double click it. Here's our weight map. It matches our diffuse. It's oriented correctly. We can close out of that. So now we have Physics turned on for our scene. We have Physics activated for the loincloth because it's selected. We have a weight map applied to the loincloth, so it should behave like clothing. So if I go in here to motion, mail, walk, and hit play, you'll see all of the verts up here are weighted to the body. You'll see back here, this is all weighted to the hips or, you know, as his legs move, his loincloth moves. And then here is where it kind of flops around. Now, if I grab this slider here and start sliding around, you'll see it's, it goes back to just being weighted to his body. So if you wanna have the ability to scrub through an animation, there's two things you gotta do. Uh, number one, turn it from real time to by frame. So just tap that button there. And number two, go into your edit project settings. And if I scroll down, you'll see the simulation here, the rigid body, if I turn that off, it turns that button off and I turn off soft cloth, it turns that button off. So that's really all that's happening is it's in your project preferences. This turns on rigid body. This turns on soft cloth. Underneath soft, soft cloth, you'll see there's a bake animation option. Go ahead and turn that on. So now if I go back and I say, you know, again, we were, what we're doing, mail. Well, you know what, let's do this one. Let's soft physics spin around. So now if I play this animation with by frame and I let this animation run, so we'll let it do a full, we'll get, let it get to the end. So here it is, it's all, physics sim simulated cloth here. It's all wrinkling as he moves and stuff. There it goes to let it get it settled in. Now, if I go through and scrub, it will actually scrub through the cloth changes. So this just allows you the ability to kind of scrub through and see the cloth update, as opposed to if you have that turned off, it will revert back to just body weighted uh, clothing. So there we go. We now have cloth. We have capsules affecting that cloth, pushing it around. It's hanging, it's floating. It's behaving as we would expect for a cloth object. All of our clothing is bound to the body. So as the body moves, the uh, pieces move with it. And then our accessories are bound to a single joint. So the helmet's going along with his head, his backpack's going with his spine, and everything's behaving as we would expect. So let's go ahead and go back here to motion. 
pose, A pose. So now there's just one more thing we got to do, and this is the fun part, honestly, is we're going to go ahead and save all of these objects to our library so we can use them later on other characters or variants of this character. So we have our character here. We have everything all set up. We have cloth and textures and pivot points and weights and everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and save this to our library. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the very top one and the very bottom selection and we're going to turn the eyeball off to turn everything off in our scene and then we'll just start at the top so we've got our pants selected let's go ahead and turn the eyeball back on we'll zoom in and i'm going to frame this up because when i go into the library i want to make sure that we have a nice thumbnail that is going to be based off this viewport of course you can make your own custom thumbnail and bring that in but i'm just going to use character creator to make my thumbnails for me so hide everything but the pants frame it up in your camera here and then go into, with the pants selected, go into the content tab. And by default, you'll be over here in template. This is stuff that character creator comes with or things you buy from the marketplace. It'll end up here. If you're making your own stuff, that's gonna be in the custom tab. So hop over to the custom tab. Uh, by default, I'm, I have a project folder selected. If I go down here with pants selected and hit save, it might choose pants for me. If it doesn't, you can do this drop down arrow, go in here to cloth then choose pants. That'll put it into the asset type cloth pants, which means it's going to go into the cloth directory into the pants folder. Uh, and then you can just give it a name. However, you can also help it out by going in here to cloth and pants. And you can see I already got a pair of pants saved in here. Slightly different. So uh, with this open, I'm going to hit save. And now you're going to see, okay, asset type cloth pants uh, file name. We'll go ahead and call this again goblin demo pants i suppose and we'll go ahead and hit okay and now again it's going to take our camera section here uh give us a thumbnail based on that and we have a pair of pants in here how cool is that so let's go back to our scene and we'll just do this with all of it so glove we'll turn on glove turn everything else off we'll frame this glove up we'll go back to content uh and this one we do have a glove section so i'm going to hit save and we'll call it goblin demo gloves and i should be able to click and drag these it looks like I can click and drag and move them into some of these categories, but not other. You can also right click them and say move to category and choose one. But gloves just isn't showing up. But anyway, others is totally fine. So we'll go back to our scene here and we'll turn on boots and we'll just keep moving down our options list. So now we're here to accessories. So I'm going to turn on the water pouch here. Uh, same thing as cloth. All I have to do is one easy way to do this is go in here to accessory. I'm going to choose others and I'm going to hit save and we'll call this goblin demo water pouch is going to save it to accessory others hit OK. And there it goes. And so you just again, just continue working down your scene here and filling in those slots. And when we're done with that, we'll go ahead and turn all our eyeballs back on. And we have our goblin with our library content saved. So if I want to swap some of these out, so let's go in here. I'm going to take his shirt, delete it out of our scene. Let's go back into content. Let's switch over to template. I'm going to go into their clothing here. We got some shirt options available to us. Let's put on this basic t-shirt. That'll go ahead and wrap this basic t-shirt to him. Uh, again, I you know, maybe I don't want this water pouch now that his t-shirt overlaps that. Maybe I want to get this water pouch out of here. Let's go ahead and select that shirt. We'll go into conform. Cloth layer settings. I'm going to put the shirt on top of everything, which it already is. I'm going to run collision. That'll make sure the pants, which are underneath it, is going to influence where the shirt lands. So hopefully the shirt pops out in front of the pants. There we go. So the shirt's out over the pants now, basically. And we'll go ahead and turn that off. And again, if I even want to swap those pants out, I can. Let's go ahead and take those pants off. Well, first we got to go out of conform for that object. We'll delete the pants here. We'll go into content, go into pants. Let's get in some slim jeans. And in this case, we don't need his loincloth anymore. Don't need his boots. We'll go back into content. Give him some shoes. So again, you can go through and mix and match from your character. Now, if we do decide, you know what? I'm not digging these uh, pants and shoes combo. Let's go ahead and delete the shoes out of our scene. Delete the jeans out of our scene. All we got to do is go back into content, switch over to custom. We can put in our goblin demo boots here. And I have some older goblin 02 shoes that are similar. They're just colored red. Um, well, again, we'll just throw on the boots. 
Go back into our pants, throw those back on. We'll take the basic t-shirt off. We'll go back to our clothing shirts, double click that. Go in here to motion, mail, walk M. And there we go, we got library assets. Uh, if if I do, you know, right now he's, you know, has a weapon in his hand, but you know, he's not actually using it. If you wanna keep it in your scene, but not see it, obviously you can go into the scene tab, you can turn off the ax. Uh, if you do have the ax visible, you can go back in here. Uh, let's go back in here to content template. Uh, there's all sorts of animations you can apply. I have a motion pack in here. Studio mocap. We have a single handed. I'm going to go ahead and do this sword provoke. Uh, if it ever yells at you, go back into scene and make sure you have your character node selected. And then you can apply your animation to that. Now, if it if the animation moves way out of, you know, out of here, let's hit uh, W and we'll just move everything back so we can see it play out. And we'll hit play. And right now we have by frame turned on uh, for cloth caching purposes. If you don't need that, you can say real time. So now he's wielding that. Uh, you can see his hand is closed. Now the ax isn't quite fitting in there. It's easy enough to fix. Go back in here to scene, go back to ax, hit W, and then just move this into place. Again, move, scale, rotate, whatever you wanna do. And that'll ensure that as he's moving this ax around with this animation, it's behaving as expected. So here he is, he's got the ax grabbed, it's moving around and uh, he's good to go. In the next video, we're gonna discuss setting up our source ZBrush body, clothing and accessories file with Character Creator to pose your models for a 3D print workflow.